If your doctor tells you that you have pre-diabetes, I am here to tell you not to be fooled by the pre part of that. Because what it means is that your blood glucose levels are slightly higher than normal. So even though they may not be high enough to qualify for the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes, they are still elevated and, and they're leading you toward type 2 diabetes. And every time blood glucose levels are elevated, your blood vessels take a hit. And that's why type 2 diabetes and diabetes increase the risk of heart attack and stroke. Now the statistics are staggering. One out of three Americans has prediabetes. And what's even more shocking is 75% of those people don't know they have it. But now that I've scared you sufficiently, let me say that you can turn all of this around and the first medicine for it is food. I mean, how cool is that? So uh, there is not one diet for diabetes, um, which is interesting, but many people respond well to a Mediterranean style diet or a low carb diet or um, a vegan diet is shown to be effective as long as it's healthy. And what the three of those have in common is that they contain a lot of plant-based high fiber foods because fiber helps to keep blood glucose levels uh, steady. So in particular, soluble kinds of fiber because soluble fiber forms this sort of viscous gel in the stomach, which can slow down the absorption of, of glucose. So that would be foods like carrots and oats, um, beans, these are pinto beans, nuts, as you know, we like to promote those, strawberries, blueberries, apples. Now, insoluble fiber is also helpful. Um, that's the kind you've heard about that helps to keep you regular because it moves food through the intestinal tract more quickly, and in doing so, may prevent all of the absorption of, of the glucose. So uh, on the other hand, it's not just food that you have to pay attention to, it's also the timing of your, your meals. And what studies are showing is that if you eat all of your food within a 10 hour window, uh, that's helpful. So let's say you eat breakfast at 8.30, you might wanna start winding things down by 6.30 p.m. or maybe 8.30. So um, that means you wanna maybe eat a bigger breakfast. And then of course your biggest meal should be lunch and your smallest meal would be dinner. I mean, where have we heard that before? So um, if you wanna know how this is all working for you, one thing you can do is start testing your blood sugars. So you can buy these little monitors at the pharmacy where you poke your finger and you get a little drop of blood on a test strip and you put it in there and it gives you your blood glucose level. Or this is the newer kit on the block. This is a, a Freestyle Libre. You put this little sensor on your arm for 14 days and then you program your phone and it'll tell you morning, noon, and night what your blood glucose levels are. So you can see how a particular food is impacting you. So listen, if your doctor tells you that you have prediabetes, consider it a wake up call. There is no one size fits all in terms of diet, exercise, stress, timing, but a little trial and error can help you to figure out what works for you. And that is smart eating.